on the roof. Uh, so I'll show you the filter, but uh, yeah, the filter was disgusting. I had to vacuum the grill, it was gross. Um, we got no heat call, this serves three different suites. So there's one thermostat that controls all of these. And blower's not running. So let's go ahead and kill the power. So let's see what's going on with this thing. Probably dead motor. Let's see how hot this motor is. Yeah, so, and then when I got here, the thermostat was set to 45 degrees, so very unlikely it's been running for that long. So we're going to go ahead and check the run cap first, and then uh, I, I am assuming that the, the blower is probably dead, so, yep. So we're checking the run cap. It's a 7.5. It's at 7.241, so it should probably be replaced, but um, that's not weak enough for the motor to not spin, so the blower is probably dead considering the filter was gross, as you saw. Yeah, it's spinning freely, so looks like we're gonna have to change out this blower motor. So I'm gonna open up this bigger panel and see what kind of motor we have, because I do have some on the truck, so hopefully they'll work. I gotta take these side screws off. So I'm not getting a screw in there, see? Thanks guys, but I did just recently get some of these. So should be able to, oops, wrong way. Aha! So. Hang off just from that. So I looked on that side, I looked on that side, I removed this crossbar down the bottom, and I found out that you gotta take the two screws off right there. So you gotta take the lid off. And these screws, thankfully I had those ratcheting uh, wrenches, cause that totally made that possible. If I didn't have those, there's no way I was getting those screws off. So anyway, we're gonna get this blower out. This blower was blasted. Pretty much looks just like the filter did. Yeah, the windings are completely caked in this stuff, so probably shorted or something. Well, we got specs. So I'm gonna pull the blower motor out and then we'll go from there. And that's how we did it. So basically you take two screws out and you just pull it out. Uh, terrible mounting way. I guess stupid I have to take the lid off. Anyway, let's try to get this blower motor out. Motor's toast, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah. We'll see if we can get the specs off of it and see what we got on the truck. So I got the specs. This thing, it's like, it's super hot. It's 150 degrees, so it's, def it's definitely dead. I'm not even gonna amp dry all that. There's no point to it. Um, I know there's power because it's hot, so it's receiving power, otherwise it'd be cold. Um, it's probably just got so caked with stuff it overheated it's one too many times until it died. So it's a 208, 230 volt, um, 1075 single phase so i think i have one of those on the truck so we're going to go ahead and talk to our client and also we got to get some filters and then we'll go from there all right so i figured since i have the uh top off i'll just go ahead and inspect the heat exchanger because this thing is in terrible condition i don't know if you can see but the coil completely plugged <sighs> yeah it's plugged too that's okay that little bit plugage right there but I did see we have a crack right there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's go ahead and get something so we can point it out. So we got a crack in the heat exchanger right there. Let's see if we can focus. Oh, focus. So yeah, right there, you see that crack? And then we got another crack on the other heat exchanger right there near the back, right there. <sighs> we need a new heat exchanger uh, or a new unit because crack kills. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was terrible, but yeah. So I found out it's a Goodman. Uh, so I'm waiting to see what the client wants to do. In the meantime, I'm going to see if I can find a heat exchanger. Doubtful. Because um, replacing this is going to be crazy because look, that's, that's the supply discharge off there. And then the return is that way. So it's like that way and that way just stupid they just like cut a hole on the side um so we're probably gonna have to reduct all this if we change the unit um basically i've turned off the gas i'm gonna put it back together and then i will see what they want to do but anyway bad blower motor turned into a um cracked heat exchanger two cells of them Alrighty, so uh believe it or not i found three heat exchangers there's three of them in stock in portland 
heck yeah, man. So we're probably, the, the, the customer opted to change the heat exchanger. So when I change that out, I'll clean the coil um, and then uh, replace the blower. I'm probably just gonna replace the blower right now because uh, they already signed it. It's already approved and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back once we get that. Part. Oh God, I need to know the horsepower. It's the third. So I got this Mars motor right here. So it does third. So let's see, a third horse. I want to use medium high or medium low. And uh, I'm going to need to use a 10, uh, 10, uh, a 10 run cap. So let's get this installed. Alrighty then. So uh, we're back here and uh, we got our heat exchanger over there. So we're going to take this all completely apart again. Uh, just so you know, this is off. That's been off since I left. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and disassemble this thing and uh, get the heat exchanger swapped out. So here we go. All right, so we got the lid off. We're going to disconnect the gas line, get the burner assembly out there, uh, disassemble the inducer, and then get this thing out. So it looks like there's screws all along the sides. So getting these screws is going to be kind of a pain. So, yeah, and then once I get this out, I'm going to try to clean that coil a little bit better. It's already a thousand times better than it was when I first found it see there and then we'll get this whole area cleaned out and vacuumed and all that good stuff so anyway here we go got all the wires disconnected got the gaskets connected now there's four bolts here or four little screws here they're uh, five sixteenths each and then this whole thing will come out so we're gonna do that of course I need to get my well it's stuck but yeah anyway uh, you're gonna need an extension to do that makes it a lot easier so here we go We'll be back once we get this off. All right, so we got that all off. Gasket's intact. I'm probably gonna use that high temperature silicone to, re to reseal that. Uh, so now we got screws here on the sides. Looks like that's all of them. Then uh, we go ahead and pull this thing out. So this side's gonna be difficult to get to. You can see the screws there. Uh, I don't know if my drill will fit. It might actually. Well, not with the bit on, but. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and try to get this unscrewed and see if I can get this thing out. Because for some reason they cut a hole in the side of this and that's where the uh, supply is, which is stupid. See? So you're supposed to have it return there and supply there, but they put the supply on the side for some reason. So, and I know you guys are telling me I should have put a new inducer on and I wanted to, but the um, owner didn't want to pay extra for that. They're like, just reuse everything. So, uh, I'm sure we'll be changing that out later. But anyway, uh, let's get this thing out. It's okay, it's okay. I got one of these. All right, we got all the screws out. Thank you for my 90 degree thing. Uh, I ended up having to take off the, uh, I guess that's the pipe or the flu shroud or whatever this thing, because it does cover some of the screws. So now we gotta get these screws out, which they look pretty accessible, so we should be all right. Should have known, there's three more screws here at the bottom, one there, so they're kind of buried in dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and take those out, then we'll take it out. Okay, now it should come out. All right, we got her out. So you can see a temperature stress there. It's somewhat dark. And there's, there's a crack right there. Check that out, that's a big one. Ooh, there's even more to it. And then we got another one right over there. And those were the ones that I saw. I don't know if there's any more. Looks like that, yeah, but that that's that one right there. That's a big one. Look, you can actually see inside. So that was just gonna get bigger. Yeah, that's it, just two cracks, but all you need is one. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and grab the new one and pop that in there, but before I do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to clean this out a little bit because as you can see there's a lot of dirt in there and then I now have full access to the uh, evaporator coil so we're going to get that clean, get this all cleaned out first uh, and then we'll uh, put in the new heat exchanger. Alrighty, so we got her all nice and clean. Now we got to prep our new heat exchanger. Um, it looks like I do have to replace that piece there too. Um, sometimes they come with it, sometimes they don't, so I'm going to take that off. We'll probably end up having to use that cock, the high temp cock, because I'm pretty sure I'll damage that uh, that gasket. Although 
that one came off pretty good, so I might be able to reuse it. We'll see. So, uh, yeah. And yes, I did try to order a gasket kit, and they didn't have it, so that's that's why. But anyway, um, that's what the caulking is for. So anyway, um, we got this all nice and cleaned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and prep the new heat exchanger and get it in there. So here we go. So here's our new ex heat exchanger. It's always good to just kind of do a quick inspection, make sure there's no defects. You know, like, I mean, I can see there's a big old scratch right here. Oh, send it back. Can't use it. It's got scratch. And uh, another scratch here. But yeah, we just want to make sure that there's no other cracks. Um, I've never seen it happen, but I've heard where you've had a cracked heat exchanger out of the box or like, you know, one of these seams isn't pinched on properly or you got missing things. So it's always good to take a look. Like, see, look at that. That's a pretty good gash oh it's just sealing never mind but yeah always well, a good idea to check it like the when once we fire this thing up that that was gonna burn off and stink but uh, I was able to pick it off so anyway um, let's get this thing in there alrighty our heat exchanger is in place it's all screwed in it's nice in there uh, we were able to get the I guess it's a collector box I don't know um, it's in pretty good shape uh, actually, it didn't damage the gaskets at all, so I just reused it. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and clean off. I'm going to clean the burner assembly, flame sensor, igniter, all that good stuff. And then we'll put it all back together. All right, so we're ready to fire her up. We're going to go ahead and check the gas pressure and adjust it if necessary. Um, our incoming gas pressure is at 7.59, which is good. Um, zero because it's off. So I think the thermostat should be calling. If not, we'll jump it out. But let's go ahead and fire this up. So here we go. All right, so we got ignition. Um, the flames are yellow just because of all the dust. Uh, and I've already, and one thing when you're changing out a heat exchanger, when you fire it up for the first time, let whoever know in the space that it's gonna stink because it's gonna be burning off all the oils and stuff like that uh, from, um, from construction, you know, when they built it. Anyway, our gas pressure is pretty high. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that down. We don't want a new one to crack. And uh, the fan has already been changed. I replaced it last time I was here. Oh yeah, she's stinky. Uh, sometimes it can actually set off, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fire smoke detectors. So, you know, let them know about that. Probably a good idea to open up all the uh, windows. So anyway, uh, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Thanks for watching.